Now that we have looked at parts, we can look at how to make an assembly and the different tools you can use to make an assembly. I have created an assembly template like we did for the parts templates and added it to the folder. To start an assembly, go to the new button and in the window click on the assembly template. In the left side menu, it will ask you how you would like to start your assembly. You can either start it with a part or by creating a layout. You will likely always start it with a part unless you are creating an in context assembly. To add a component, you can either add it by using the white box if it is already open or click on the browse button and find the part in your documents. For this demo, I will add a part with a hole that I already created. Now to add your first part, it is a good idea to just click the green check mark rather than dragging and dropping your part. By clicking the green check mark, your part will be fixed in space and you cannot move it. If you were to drag and drop it, then it will be floating in space and it can be moved anywhere. Also, by clicking the green check mark, instead of dragging and dropping it, the origin of the part will match up with the origin of the assembly. In the feature tree, you will see your part and the letter F in brackets, meaning that it is fixed in space. You can test this by clicking on it and trying to drag it around. To add a part, go to the assembly tab and click on the insert component button. The menu on the left pops up again, however this time you can only add a component, not start a layout. Find the part you want to add. This time, don't click on the green check mark. Drag and drop your part in the assembly space. This will make it movable, which is needed to place it properly. Now we will use the mate tool to position the second part. In the assembly tab, click on the mate tool. To mate a part, you will need to click on the features or entities you would like to be mated. For this example, click on the faces that need to be touching. Click the edges of the two parts so the faces are always touching. A small pop-up window will show up next to your cursor. You can use this menu or the menu to the left. If the proper mate was created, then you can click the green check mark. Now add the second mate to make the top and bottom even, and then click the green check mark. Now do the sides and then finish by clicking the check mark to close the mating tool. Now you will notice that the second block can no longer be moved. This is because it is completely mated to the other fixed object and has no degrees of freedom. You can see if your assembly is fully defined by looking at the bottom right of your screen and seeing that the fully defined text shows up. If it is not fully defined, it will say underdefined. You can also see if an individual component is underdefined by seeing if there is a minus sign next to the part name in the feature tree. You can see all of your assembly mates in the feature tree under the mates section. Also, you can see the mates contained in a part by clicking the plus sign next to the part, and then clicking the plus sign next to the mates in the part section. Hopefully this video will make you start to understand the basic concepts of an assembly. I will be going over more details about assemblies in this chapter.